All right. Well, I think things are stabilizing with our attendee numbers. So why don't we get started with uh, this afternoon's uh, presentation? I guess it's the first one of the afternoon. Um, so uh, the presentation is, well, I should say first, my name is Timothy Ryan Mendenhall. I am one of the co-chairs of the conference and I'll be the Zoom host right now. I am at Columbia University in New York City. And uh, today's presentation, Designing Blue Core, Enabling Scalable Collaborative Linked Data for Libraries, will be presented by Callie Matthews uh, from Stanford University. Callie is the Linked Data Community Outreach Librarian at Stanford Libraries and the Blue Core Project Manager. And with that, I'll hand it over to Callie. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, thank you, LD4, and all the volunteers um, who are helping with this session. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to close my uh, Zoom windows here and try to keep an eye on the chat, but I appreciate your help there. Um, so yes, welcome. Uh, my, my name is Callie. I will be talking a bit about Blue Core today. This is the first um, presentation about Blue Core at LD4. So I'm very excited to be here and thank you for including me in the program. Okay, so uh, you may or may not be familiar with Blue Core and what it is. So uh, just to start, what is Blue Core? Blue Core is a collaboration that envisions a shared linked data environment to bring bid frame cataloging to production. We aim to shift from established local copying and editing workflows to collaborative community-based practices that can be scaled across uh, unveiled at the BibFrame workshop in Europe last year by Philip Skur from Stanford University. Um, and we also, I recently presented at this year's BibFrame workshop in Europe. So you may see some overlap between that presentation and this one, uh, though there have been updates even in just the few weeks since then. So the Blue Core vision essentially outlines a desire to build a shared linked data store for BibFrame works instances and more. Um, it is to be maintained and operated by a small consortium of libraries and then structured to grow over time. It will integrate with established and emerging systems and providers and will break the institutional copy model mostly most associated with the MARC cataloging workflows we're very familiar with and move towards a more collaborative cataloging uh, environment. It will offer its data openly, available to the worst, the world for reuse at no charge, and is uh, to be useful and accessible to other institutions. So a little more concrete, the Blue Core, uh, Blue Core will support linked open data work at scale by accommodating LSP variety, transitioning LD4P tooling, and developing shared production workflows. And I will talk about this in more detail in the coming slides. The functionality and services built will expand, refine, connect, or combine existing separate solutions and systems. And the Blue Core community will embrace collaboration, reciprocity, and plans for multiple levels of engagement. So when I mention reciprocity here, I'm nodding to Ruth Kitchen Tillman, who wrote a recent article on systems migrations. Um, and I think many of the points she raised in that article, which is fantastic, um, also apply to migrating data formats. Um, and so reciprocity is included here. Uh, for, for more information, please do read her article. In my slides, I'm linking to the earlier Blue Core presentation. So as I mentioned, uh, the, uh, Blue Core was first introduced at the BibFrame workshop in Europe in 2023. So we are a relatively new project. There's also a wonderful presentation at CNI. And uh, more recently, I just presented at this year's BibFrame workshop in Europe in Helsinki, and a link to that recording is included as well. So the remainder of the presentation will be a update on where we are today and where we hope to be going. So we will talk about new members to the group, how we've established working groups, 
how we are planning for community, the work we're doing to design a blue core prototype, and our next steps. So at the BibFrame workshop in Europe, we officially announced that the University of California Davis has joined the existing members of Blue Core, who include Cornell University, the Library of Congress, Stanford University, and the University of Pennsylvania. Blue Core planning to date, uh, the Blue Core institutions have been collaborating since 2023. We have been meeting both in person and online to refine plans and begin designing. As the design for the project began to shape, take shape, there were working groups that formed naturally out of our discussions and they have been working um, for the last several months on various aspects of the project. These working groups do overlap with those key areas. The work of each group informs each other and collectively contributes to the planning and design of So to speak a little bit more to the different working groups and what they do. So Blue Core Governance provides leadership, furthers the shared vision and goals for the project. They contribute team members to the technology and cataloging project teams. They host and plan in-person summits for focus, discussion, and planning. We actually just met yesterday and the day before here at Stanford. They work on developing principles for participation, developing shared policies, and exploring current and existing partnerships. So all the easy stuff. <laughs> Cataloging norms and the metadata uh, working group are developing technical bid frame documentation for use in the system. They're outlining the entities and scope for Blue Core, which today include works, instances, and events. They're defining duplicates and what a duplicate would, uh, how a duplicate would be flagged within a shared system. They're outlining the indexing needs for the prototype, defining the standards for ingest, such as approved Mark 21 conversions, namely the LC converter, um, and appropriate metadata application profiles. So using the BibFrame PCC uh, profiles. We're also looking at workflows for original copy and bulk cataloging at a high level. And as we continue working with them, these will be refined. They're also developing a community cataloging plan. So we're hoping to utilize effective patterns from the Wiki Wikimedia communities of practice. We know well in LD4, many of us have been working in Wikidata for a very long time, and that there are many things that work in Wikidata and, and certainly things that could work better, but borrowing from those um, experiences and uh, workflows for lack of better terms in Wikidata that have worked well in our pilot projects or um, various special projects and weaving them into the plan where appropriate. We plan on having Blue Core bid frame cataloger virtual meetups and engaging catalogers in the planning process so that they can help inform the workflows and uh, the decisions made around the community cataloging plan. And we are essentially asking the question, how do we best prepare for a collaborative cataloging environment where my data is your data, we're all editing the same fields and institutional ownership of a specific copy of a MARC record is not part of the picture. The technical systems working group is made of developers and technical specialists who are developing the Blue Core technical project plan. They are refining and enhancing the Blue Core architectural diagram that was shown at last year's uh, BitFrame workshop in Europe. We have been speaking quite a bit about APIs and how they will drive the services and services more specifically uh, being data ingest, export, maintenance services, lookups, change notifications, search, and reporting. The prototype won't include all of these services, but this is what we are hoping to achieve in the MVP. The APIs will be open so that other editors and tools can interact with the system. And we are still in the process, uh, though getting closer to a final idea of what a what requirements for a just right prototype might look like. So when I say just right prototype, 
the idea here is to not build something so small that it won't inform our decisions and build for a, a more production ready product and not something so large that we end up diving into a production ready product or, or tool before we have really worked out um, a testing phase uh, for and, and the more appropriate size for determining uh, what an MVP might look like. So something right in the middle. Many of the members of the group were PIs or involved directly with LD4P efforts, which were funded by the Mellon Foundation. And we are hoping to transition the skills, knowledge, tools, and technology from LD4P and its cycles to the Blue Core project. So this is just a list here, uh, both to celebrate and acknowledge and also uh, to functionally share uh, what we are looking at uh, and the experiences gained in, in building these tools or um, resources. So the Sanopia editor, the Sanopia database, the questioning authority lookup service, the PCC data pool, uh, various work on discovery knowledge panels and data enrichment outputs, the perform music ontology, the art and rare materials bid frame extension, and all of the various experiences using and experimenting with Wikidata and Wikibase. So as I mentioned, we are currently working on a prototype. We are outlining the associated services and requirements for that prototype, drawing on the knowledge and experience I, I just mentioned to develop the prototype environment, it will include 350,000 entities from id.lock.gov. It will integrate with Sinopia and Marva linked data editors. It will have support batch level ingest and export. It will demonstrate the ability to send updates to consuming systems, search within the database, and it will need to be compatible with the Alma and Folio library service platforms. The members of Blue Core are currently using these two LSPs, and we do have ILS middleware from Sinopia that in, can connect uh, Sinopia to these two. So building on that and making sure that whatever we build for Blue Core can work with our library systems will be crucial. So this is a diagram. Um, of our MVP. So as I mentioned, the prototype won't include all of these different services, but this can give you an idea of where we're headed. So you can see the share the shared bid frame data store in the center as our big blue um, block. Uh, it will include index, indexing and database backups. We have uh, considerations here for service APIs, export services. We are going to support uh, bid frame to mark conversion and back both in the bulk and single record level. We will need to have duplicate detection, validation, authorization, and authentication, admin metadata. Uh, we will connect to an editor. Um, we will need various maintenance services, which include bulk operations. Co-concurrency control is basically how do we navigate shared editing um, and maintain data integrity through that process. And the assumptions here are that APIs will drive the services um, and that the APIs will be open. And you can see here that we also have the data connecting to external data partners um, and to our ILS and discovery layers. This diagram is one um, first pass at workflows that might come into play for Blue Core. You can see it says all workflows in purest, most basic form. So we're discussing what original cataloging looks like at each of our institutions, what copy, copy cataloging looks like um, and how we might handle bulk load. So I think some things to point out here are that um, the workflows may start in various places, um, but essentially Blue Core will hold work and instance data that will uh, link to our local systems and the item and holding data, at least at this point, remains separate from the Blue Core data store. We may be able to surface that data for workflow purposes, but at this point in time, the idea is to not store that data. We want uh, Blue Core to primarily hold uh, title level or just bibliographic information with local data remaining a local concern. So our next steps, um, this is a timeline that uh, we have been using over the last year or so. So the idea was first conceived in 2023. We are in our planning and designing phase this year, and next year we hope to begin testing and implementing uh, the prototype and MVP. 
So I am, I'm not going to get too into the details here because it's such recent news, but we have selected a, a path forward for our prototype. Um, so we're going to be fleshing out those details more over the next few months to organize and operationalize the shared development effort. We will begin engaging catalogers and metadata librarians at each institution and in getting their feedback and making tweaks along the way. We will continue to refine plans for the metadata workflows and continue updating professional communities and speaking to folks like uh, LD4 here to share our progress and get feedback, answer any questions that you may have as we uh, continue working. So that's all I have. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. And thank you again for the time. Okay, so we do have a few questions already. Let me see. And if anybody has any more, please go ahead and be adding them to chat or Q&A or Slack. So the first question, um, at a high level, what would a copy cataloging workflow be if not copying down into any system? Isn't it all original and enhanced cataloging fundamentally? Well, I can say that I definitely don't have an answer for what a full copy cataloging workflow would look like. I think the questions that we're asking is what data would need to be stored in a local system. Uh, and I'm saying stored, but we're definitely not moving that data uh, in any sense that we would like with what we do with Mark now. Um, so I can speak to Folio, for example. So in Synopia, uh, which is how I'm just starting to think of it, we have uh, more description in Synopia than we are sending to Folio. And that uh, data lives in a Folio inventory instance record. And we are planning on adding more fields to map to Folio. But the idea is that the complete record would be stored in Blue Core, and there may be more data there than we decide to put into Folio, um, and that the data of record would be in Blue Core. Um, so I hope that sort of hints at the question, um, isn't it all original and enhanced cataloging fundamentally? I, I'm not sure what that question, that part of the question is getting at, um, okay. but please let me know if I can be more clear. Yeah. Um, second question is um, the PCC data pool in Synopia is a very different type of culture and community than the Wikidata community and practices. Do you have a sense yet which culture of cooperation, collaboration, and true inclusivity beyond PCC Blue Core is aimed for? Well, I agree that PCC and Wikidata communities are very different, right? And I think when we look at Blue Core and compare it to Wikidata, Wikidata is designed to be an open pool for people all over the world to contribute to and you make an account and you can start editing right away, right? And there are various ways you can be trained to use Wikidata uh, in a way that is helpful, right? So we have like uh, property constraints and flags that let people know, you know, this, this value really shouldn't be used here, or you're actually going to need to provide a reference for this. And those types of things I think are helpful, right? In any in editing, shared editing environment. Um, I think the data modeling in Wikidata is very open and can be interpreted in lots of different ways. And that's not something we wanna recreate in Blue Core. It will be a shared library pool of bib frame data based on standards. Um, we are primarily working with the PCC bib frame templates uh, that are created by and maintained by the metadata applications working group. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a live it's a pool for library metadata. It's not an open pool for all sorts of uh, different types of entities. And uh, much like Synopia uses the questioning authority, uh, we're discussing what vocabularies would be used. Um, I do think the way that the Wikimedia communities attempt to address um, inclusivity concerns is admirable and something to look at, I think the success they have is often a little bit less clear. 
Um, so I think this is a place where we look to the community of catalogers that will be working in Blue Core for their ideas and guidance in this area. Um, but I think in, in terms of like a workflow perspective, one thing that excites me is the ability to work in a shared environment with catalogers from institutions that maybe you you may be part of the same institution or not um, and document decisions made. So for example, a Wikidata item having a discussion page uh, for each entity, I think could be really exciting if you had that for, uh, let's say a bid framework and you were discussing the subject for that work, you could document those discussions in a public way um, and then refer back to them as both like a teaching tool and also just to track uh, what changes had been made to that entity over time, which is definitely something we don't have in a mark-based environment, um, at least not the way I'm I'm envisioning it. Uh, so I hope I hope that helps. Great. Um, so a comment from uh, Huda. Uh, thank you for your presentation. One question regarding the workflows in their purest form slide. Um, I was just curious about the color coding, perhaps too in the weeds, but I wondered what the different colors meant. Thanks and great work. Thanks, Huda. Um, I think these just, I didn't make the chart. I think they just signify the different uh, movements. So we're starting, green looks like the, the local system. Uh, so in this case, we're starting in the ILS and we're ending with local information. Blue looks like blue core. Um, and then the yellow looks like an action is how I would interpret it. Okay. Another question just came in. Would it be wise to get some non-PCC have non-PCC heavy cataloging shops incorporated in the early phases of planning and thinking, not too much longer after the Davis edition? Whether or not it would be wise, I, I don't know. I can say that the reason we're starting small is to try to get uh, the project in a good position to bring other folks on. Um, so reaching consensus among our number of institutions, while it sounds like a small number, it is still something that takes time and a lot of deliberation and thought and careful planning. And so I think the idea to not bring on too many folks too soon is that we'll build a sturdy foundation to build on. Um, so at this point, it's not part of our planning, but I do think getting this feedback in forums like this one is really helpful. Um, and hearing your responses to these decisions help uh, influence that planning as we go. Great. Any other questions? We actually have a decent amount of time left in the session here, so plenty of time for more questions. I just think it's amazing what what you have accomplished because I, as somebody who is very much on the periphery here of the linked data stuff, I just uh, blows me away how advanced some people are. <laughs> It blows me away too. I have to say, you know, I joined LD4 a couple of years ago and I started experimenting with Sinopia eh, maybe a few years ago, but Sinopia has been around since 2019. And when I talk about the LD4 P outputs, it is remarkable the amount of work that has gone on and the expertise in the group. I am impressed every time we meet. <laughs> Um, I'll ask a question. Um, and so it was clear in the presentation that like right now the, the scope of Blue Core is just bib frame works in instances. Um, is there, has there been any talk of moving into like something like the authority realm, like for, you know, other entities, uh, not just works instances or even items, but, you know, agents and uh, things like that? Yes, we have discussed it right now. We are focusing just on bibliographic data. I think with agents, um, 
and other various more authority entities, there are a lot of, uh, I think, ways to make it. We have to remember we're building an ecosystem, right? And we have URIs that are being created. And the, the benefits of linked data is not creating more URIs for things that already exist. So I think there still needs to be work and discussion around um, the most efficient ways to do this and the ways to leverage linked data um, in a way that is smart and not duplicating the work um, or URIs or descriptions that may already exist. Um, so it's a good question and something we're definitely talking about. But as it stands now, it will be work, works and instances um, and events, though I would definitely put the emphasis on work and instance for now and in BibFrame. Um. So someone asked about, um, for many libraries, OCLC is currently a major source of shared cataloging, but um, they don't see that in the workflows. Um, do you um, think about OCLC in any of the workflows you're proposing? Mm, I think each institution will have to think about it, but the current prototype is not considering external systems. I do. I think I did notice on some of the uh, on the wiki page that you um, you guys shared maybe in the last session that there are some of the groups do have OCLC representation on them. It looked like so. Yes. Okay, and a question from Heather. Can you talk a bit about a bit more about what's in the initial data pool? Is it all LC records? I'm curious about non-US works and continuing resources and how those records might be included. Thanks, Heather. That's a great question. I, we don't have a final decision on what the MVP data will be. Um, we've really just discussed the prototype data. Um, which, as I mentioned, will come from the Library of Congress. Um, Nate Trail, thank you, Nate, has pulled, uh, I think he said 1.5% of a library of the data in ID across uh, various formats. So we're looking at about 350,000 entities. We may add some more data to our testing, but we are working out what the initial production data pool would be. I think having a variety of data would be, be great. Um, and and those discussions are actually happening. So thanks for the question. Okay. Magda asks, um, well, first, thank you so much for the presentation. It sounds like a great project. Uh, could you talk more about how catalogers will be engaged in this project? Hi, Magda, sure. Um, so my hope is that we will start um, speaking with the staff at each institution and hearing their thoughts about how they would like to move forward. Uh, many of the catalogers uh, in that are associated with Blue Core institutions have been working in BibFrame, have been using Synopia or Marva um, and a variety of other linked data applications. And so I think when we start to build out policies for cataloging and when we talk about workflows, um, it will be imperative to speak, not only speak with catalogers, but have them inform the planning um, because we would hate to design a workflow, let's say that absolutely doesn't work for you or that uh, could be better. Um, I think the folks doing the cataloging will have the best input on what how they want their work to look. And I think with a change as big as moving from Mark to BibFrame, they should be part of the discussions because I think they will make it better in the end. Um, so the hope is to have some virtual meetups to start. So that would be like an online meeting. Um, firstly, to introduce the project and then discuss ways that they can help um, or inform the planning directly. And certainly as we begin testing workflows, 
um, we will want their participation as well. Um, Callie, could you speak a bit about um, how in like how an institution could get involved? Um, I, I think you said that for now it's a somewhat limited group um, while you're laying the foundation. But um, so if right now it's sort of restricted uh, to a smaller group as you do the initial planning uh, and it's not possible to come on board, could you talk about like when, uh, like if there's a timeline for on, you know, starting to onboard new new institutions? I don't have a timeline for you that I'm comfortable sharing. Um, it will be, I would say not this year. We do have to get a prototype off the ground um, and continue refining like what participation means. I think letting us know that you're interested is helpful um, because it lets us know that this work may be of interest to more institutions. And we do want to, we are designing it to grow, right? So we want more people to join, um, but we want them to join when um, it makes sense to do so. And we have something uh, more formalized uh, and you have a good idea of, of what you're signing up for and the, down to like workflows and cataloging policies and those kinds of things. So um, to be continued, but I would say, you know, if 2025 is when we're implementing, it would be sometime end of 2025 after that, at some point, maybe, I don't, I don't even want to say 2026 because I can't make a promise. Um, so stay tuned, but certainly in the future, there will be opportunities to engage and at a variety of levels, if, if maybe full, um, Full participation doesn't make sense for you or your institution. There, there are there are we are planning ways to have people involved in a variety of ways. Um, could you speak about um, if there are ways that uh, what ways can people follow the project then um, who aren't involved? Is there like sure. an email list or an announcement or a wiki page that people could keep track of? It's a great question. We actually just uh, bought, uh, decided on domains yesterday. So uh, we will have, yeah, an email um, list. We will have a website very soon um, and a lot of public facing documentation so that we can be transparent in our process and keep the group informed. Uh, I'm sorry, not keep our group informed, but keep the, the larger community informed. We have another question in Q&A. Are there other national European libraries which could come on board? Uh, why, why two presentations in Europe really to get this going beyond LD4P? Um, well, I'm sure that as we bring on more libraries, it, it won't be restricted necessarily to U.S. libraries. I think that would be great to have global representation. The reason there were two presentations, there was one presentation in Europe and it was at the BibFrame workshop in Europe. Um, and that's because we're building a BibFrame data store. So that to me makes sense. Um, we, I also spoke a bit on a, a panel at WolfCon, which was held in London this year. Um, and that was because a Stanford is a folio library and that it was our annual conference. Um, so I hope I hope that is clarifying. We still have almost um, about 10 minutes left if anyone has any other questions. And um, if you have comments or longer questions that you would just like to ask, uh, raise your hand and I can unmute you. Uh, Jessica, I could also say, um, following up on Ryan's question about getting in touch, you can all, I will put my email in the chat. Anyone can email me with questions later on um, if they come to you or if at, you see something, um, an announcement or you hear news or you have a question, you can reach out. Um, you can also reach out to me on Slack at any time. I would be happy to talk more. All right, one more question. Why, why blue core? And would this replace or serve different function than share VDE? 
would institutions maybe want both? Yeah, I think the projects uh, and initiatives are complementary. Um, it would not replace Share VDE, um, and institutions would certainly want potentially want both. A lot of the uh, existing members of Blue Core are also part of the Share VDE family. Um, I myself am part of the UI UX working group, um, so they are complementary projects. I think as we build out our prototype and learn more about what uh, what direction we want to go with with specific technologies and how we want to engage our communities. Uh, this will be something we continue to talk about, um, but we are very much um, in complement and not aiming to replace or anything of, of the sort or be in conflict in any way. And I think if the if the question is why blue core, so wh why even then do it? Um, the idea, the most like clear uh, answer to me is that we're building something that's just slightly different. So in Share VDE, you have a lot of data provenance. Um, they have discovery environments, and it's wonderful. Um, and blue core, we are aiming to break the institutional copyright. So we're not aggregating data; we are uh, creating shared data. Um, that's one pool with co-ownership. Um, and so there's like certain differences, but uh, they're very much complementary. Okay, Heather asks, are you considering working with any publishers as sources of metadata, for example? Yeah, I think vendor metadata is a great question. Uh, it's definitely something we're discussing. Uh, we know that a lot of our data comes from publishers, and we also know that publisher data uh, sometimes needs to be transformed even when working with Mark. So yes, um, it is something we are talking about. 